So in this video, I'm first going to outline everything that's happened in regards to the sanctions on Roman Abramovich and how this will affect Chelsea in the short and medium term. I'm then going to be discussing one potential candidate to take over from Abramovich, who is actually a Chelsea fan. I'm going to explain where he got his money and how realistic the deal actually is. But before I go any further, for cheap, good quality football jerseys, retro jerseys and tracksuits, go over to www.jerseyfever.com. I myself have bought a number of different jerseys from Jersey Fever, including this 2003 2004 Manchester United shirt with Ronaldo on the back and this one's probably my favourite so if you want a shirt like this be sure to click the link in the description below and use code AlantisFootball with a space to get 5% off. So Chelsea are in chaos at the moment after Roman Abramovich was sanctioned by the UK government over his links to Vladimir Putin, which I did actually make a video about a few days ago. I'll leave it linked in the description. I basically discuss how uh, Abramovich made his money and his connection to Putin. So if you are interested in that, check the description below. But it's plunging the club's future into doubt. And the news on Thursday effectively means that the Russian born billionaire can no longer go forward with his plan of selling the club. However, Chelsea can request a special dispensation which would be considered if the government views that a change of ownership is in the best interest of the club, provided it does not benefit Abramovich in financial terms. And basically what would happen in that scenario is it is likely that the government would take control of the sale and the proceeds from the sale would either be frozen or they would be given to a charitable fund, possibly for the war victims in the Ukraine. That effectively leaves Abramovich with two options. Either he agrees to the government's condition and loses the club for nothing or let Chelsea slowly rot. It is likely that Abramovich which will proceed with the sale to preserve the club's future and his legacy at the club, even though that means that he would not receive a penny from the asset that he was looking to sell for around £3 billion last week. Chelsea were holding talks on Thursday night with the government admin concerns that they would struggle to complete the campaign. Chelsea are set to lose millions in sponsorship revenue following Thursday's developments. Shirt sponsors free have already put their £40 million agreement on hold and kit suppliers Nike, who agreed a 15-year deal worth £900 million with Chelsea in 2016, are considering walking away from the deal and that would see Chelsea miss out on around £540 million in total. To top it off, Chelsea's rivals are already looking to take advantage of their situation, with two players who were due to sign for Chelsea's academy already being approached by other top-level Premier League clubs, given the ban on Chelsea signing new players. Now, Chelsea's officials have already proposed amendments to the license that was issued to them to allow them to essentially carry on operating. Under a wide range of raft and restrictions, Chelsea were left unable to sell match tickets, forced to close the club's shop, and blocked from taking bookings for the uh, Stamford Bridge Hotel. They were also told they can no longer buy or sell players or offer new contracts, and are restricted to a maximum spend of £20,000 on travel to away matches. They were also informed that they can only pay reasonable costs towards hosting home fixtures not exceeding half a million pounds per fixture per team. But there is a view that limits on transport and hosting matches will need to be raised in order to stop the club losing massive amounts of money. Chelsea can continue to receive the TV broadcast payments and prize money, but this will be frozen so they won't be able to spend it. Existing staff and players will continue to get paid. The club has also asked for clarity over the contract situations with a number of their players' deals set to expire at the end of the season and as it stands Chelsea cannot renew any of their contracts which does mean that defenders Antonio Rudiger, Andreas Christensen and Cesar Azpilicueta will leave in the summer on a free as it stands. The British billionaire Nick Candy who I will be talking about in a little more detail later on in the video has already confirmed that he's still pursuing Chelsea despite the sanctioning of the owner Roman Abramovich and the actual sanctions are expected to quicken the sales process once the confusion that has been created around these events has been fully clarified. The 49-year-old property developer is a Chelsea fan who is planning on attending Sunday's Premier League home match against Newcastle and has pledged to put supporters at the centre of his plans for the club, which will be jointly funded with American investors. Last year, Chelsea made £154 million from commercial deals despite the coronavirus pandemic, and in 2019, before COVID struck, the club earned £200 million in sponsorship. Free's announcement came hours after the company announced packages to support the Ukrainian refugees arriving in the UK including free prepaid 30-day pay-as-you-go SIM cards 
But for Chelsea, the £20,000 cap on travel for away matches has also raised logistical concerns over the club's Champions League game in Lille next week. Although Sky Sports have already reported that from a Chelsea player's agent that the club have already paid for the year's travel in advance. There is also the prospect that Chelsea's Champions League games will be played effectively behind closed doors, as those tickets are often purchased separately from the season tickets. The executives at Chelsea are also said to be concerned about the maximum spend of half a million pounds for hosting home games, which includes costs like stewarding, security and the catering supplies. On Thursday, Chelsea confirmed it intended to engage in discussions with the UK government regarding the scope of these licenses. The embargo on ticket sales will cost the club more than £600,000 per game based on a £47 minimum ticket cost for 12,834 seats at Stamford Bridge as those are the seats that aren't already occupied by the season ticket holders. Abramovich has been banned from doing business in the UK meaning that his plan to sell the club is currently on hold. So will Chelsea finish the season? Well there are concerns at Stamford Bridge that under the licence's current terms that the government have forced Chelsea to work under it does put it at risk. However the club failing to fill their fixtures doesn't really help anybody so there'll probably be some concessions made and they are currently seeking amendments to that license which they believe will allow them to complete the campaign. Is Roman Abramovich still in control? Well the assets have been frozen, Abramovich is still the owner of Chelsea but the day-to-day -day operations will be carried out by the board but Abramovich cannot profit from the running of the club. Will there be a player fire sale? Well no because Chelsea aren't able to buy or sell players and the aim of the sanctions is to stop Abramovich making money from the asset and a fire sale would probably not be a good look. Um, what does it mean for the fans? Well Chelsea have around 28,000 season ticket holders. Both they and the supporters who have already bought tickets for the away matches will be permitted to attend. And the club also can some amendments to the license as I've already said to allow them to sell tickets for future matches. Brentford have already said that they want their full allocation for the forthcoming London derby and are seeking certain urgent cl uh, clarification. What about cup ties because they're not included in the season tickets? Well as it stands the club cannot sell any tickets for cup ties either. That said there will be allies at UEFA and FA who will try and change that with the view of not penalising the fans as it is the owner who they want to be sanctioning. Uh, Yes, that is likely, but uh, UEFA may make an exception thanks to what has become basically an extraordinary case. Uh, the aim is to get the club into new hands as quickly as possible. Uh, putting off potential bidders with financial penalties would probably not be helpful either. Can they still provide match day catering? Yes, supporters will still be able to buy food and drink at the home games. But in regards to Abramovich, it is understood to be his uh, decision whether he wants to sell or continue with his assets being frozen. The club on Thursday, which was over 100 and I think it's 117th birthday uh, cannot sell any merchandise itself to celebrate it but the retailers who have already uh, bought the stock can continue to do so as long as none of the money ends up in Chelsea's hands. This current license is continuing uh, uh, continuing to operate until at least May the 31st I think but that can vary um, it can be revoked or suspended at any time and more significantly if the club were to end up in administration they would actually receive a nine point penalty in the Premier League. So now we come on to one of the potential buyers from Roman Abramovich and it is a man called Nick Candy who is a British businessman from Surrey who made his fortune in property development and sales. Him and his younger brother Christian first started business in 1995. They started out by buying a flat in Earl's Court in London for £6,000, uh, sorry with a £6,000 loan and they turned it into a £50,000 profit within 18 months. Candy and his brother continued to make high profile developments throughout the 2000s, some of which include uh, one Hyde Park, Noho Square and the Chelsea Barracks. Candy recently put his own penthouse in one Hyde Park up for sale for £175 million. While the brothers run separate businesses, they have continued to collaborate. Now Candy's uh, net worth is just shy of a billion, around 800 million to 850 million. Although together with his brother Christian, the pair are believed to be worth jointly around 1.5 billion pounds. Now if Candy does emerge as the number one candidate or even takes over Chelsea from Roman Abramovich, I will do a, a video in more depth discussing how he made his wealth and what I expect to happen in the future with Chelsea. However, at the minute there isn't enough details out there, particularly around what's going to happen with Chelsea, even under Roman Abramovich to really make those calls. I will be uh, releasing a video looking at the transfers that Chelsea should make come the summer um, where I won't be factoring in the uh, sanctions that have been imposed upon them. 
So I will, the, the video I will be releasing will assume that Chelsea go back to normal before the start of the summer. So make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you do get notified when that comes out. But in regards to Roman Abramovich um, and his tenure at Chelsea, I think there will be updates almost daily. I would certainly say weekly. I think this by this time next week there will be another update. I do expect the sale to go through pretty quickly. There does seem to be a lot of interest. Um, I don't think he'll get the three billion that he's been asking for. I have uh, seen reports that it's somewhere between two and 2.5 billion that people have been offering. So I do expect the sale to move quickly because well, Roman Abramovich hasn't really got that many options. And we are going to see how this does affect Chelsea. I don't think it will affect Chelsea too much um, in terms of their, uh, where, they were where they will finish in the season. Um, I don't think they'll go into administration. I don't think they'll have any financial difficulties. I just think it may be, maybe cause a few logistical problems from now until the end of the season. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and put your thoughts in the comment section below.